Well, hello. Welcome to IamJoshKnox.com. Last time we looked at how you can use the Excel connector to create a master data report. In my example, I looked at how you could use the Excel connector to create a report on project data. But of course, you could use that for customer data, vendor data, item data, um, really anything where there's a, a data entity to connect with. What I'd like to do today is show you how you can use the Excel add-in and build that report from scratch. Uh, so if we look at what we did last time, if I go down to project management and accounting, come into that all projects table, you can always use, if you're on some master data table, you can click on your, your open and office button you can use the, the open Excel connection to create a pre-formatted connection with the, the project data. So I'm going to click on this, click download. I'm going to do this intentionally uh, because I also want to show you this. This is just a little pet peeve of mine uh, that there's this, you know, Edge, if you're using the Edge browser, tries to be helpful and says, oh, you know, do, would you like to use this? through the, the Excel, would you like to view Excel through the, the Edge browser, which can be helpful, uh, can be not at times. The, the Excel connector doesn't work great with this, this add-in. So I don't like it and this gets, this is a frustrating part of my day. So if you don't want your download to display in, a, in an Edge browser, you'd actually like to download your Excel file and use it in Excel. It's just a simple parameter that you have to set uh, you go to your edge settings, go to downloads, and just say turn off that, that open office files and browser experience. And then the next time we come back to our uh, projects form, and I say open in Excel. Remember, open in Excel is the Excel connector. Download in Excel or export to Excel is just sort of pasting the flat data into an Excel file. I can then click open in Excel and let me drag this over here and you can see that that opens up the, the project data. I have to sign in. Let me sign in and connect to this really quick. Now it's all happy and registering. Right, and so I have the, the data connector is connected to the dynamics data. Um, and you can see right in the designer, we are looking at the project's data entity as our data source. And these are the, the columns of data from the, the project's data entity that we are bringing back into our report. and. We saw last time you can use both the, the design and the edit to, to add columns or take columns away. You can use filters to, to only, let's say, bring in uh, projects of a certain project group, of course, customers of a certain customer group, what, whatever you'd like to do. So that's our reminder of how you can, from Dynamics, say, open an Excel and, and get that experience. Uh, now, it was... I think that's a pretty basic thing to do. The, the next level of that, as I see, is being able to build that report from scratch. So not having to start in Dynamics and go somewhere, but rather start in just a blank Excel workbook and, and build that whole thing up. It wasn't until I started to do that that I really understood kind of how the, the things are connecting to each other, how the, the data touches the, the data and the, the connector connects and the Excel excels, I guess that's a, so anyways, that's what I wanna show you today. That's what I wanna focus on. So right, I have a brand new blank workbook, book three, obviously I have other books, other places. And if we wanted to make a, an instant connection to our, our database, we have to bring in that, uh, that dynamics data connector. So we say get add-ins, And we're going to add the dynamics add-in 
And this might look familiar, right? This is Microsoft Dynamics, that's what we want. Sometimes if it, if it doesn't show up in your add-ins, let's say, you might have to go to the store uh, that the store is saying it's not available to me. That, that's fine, I have the add-in, but you might have to go to the Office Store and search for Dynamics and then see the thing come up and then it will come up. So step one is to add the server information, right? This is to make the connection to your Dynamics server. So if we go back to our server, right? This is a trial environment. Here's the URL of our trial environment. I'm going to control C, copy that, bring that back to this guy and paste that, that server in here and click OK. Do we want to do that? Sure. And that connects our workbook with that specific, uh, that specific Dynamics environment, right? We could connect to any Dynamics environment that way, provided our uh, our credentials, right? You know, I'm, I have a Microsoft authentication for this use of Excel. I have a Microsoft authentication for accessing that environment. And I'm allowed to, to, to use things, to touch data or see data in that environment because of my security configuration. And that all, that all transfers down. So if I go into designer, right? This is similar to what we had before when I, I downloaded that thing from Dynamics and started, except you'll see that right we're starting with a blank canvas right but i can add a table and i just have to find the the table find the data source that i'm trying to to use so i can type projects now this is sort of an alphabetical sorting so if i start typing customer right it it follows what i'm trying to say so then i, I don't know how it resets, but I've stopped typing for a little bit. Now, if I want to type projects, P R O J E C T S, find projects. So one of the, the things with trying to start this from scratch is you have to have a sense of the data and see that you're trying to connect with what it's named. Um, that shouldn't be a big stumbling block. You can see that, that now I have all of the, the fields that are, are available just like they were in the other one. And, and, when I did this from Dynamics and said open in Excel, it had a pre-selected list of fields, but I can choose the fields that I want here. I can hold down shift and let's say I want all five of these. I can hold down shift and click to select all and add those in. And let's say I want a couple others, maybe the, I don't know, the, the project manager field, right? That's a worker responsible, uh, personnel number, I happen to know. Let's, let's say we want all three of these. I can hold or I can hold control and just select one or two of them. So if I want one here and maybe we want the, uh, I don't know, the status, I'm holding control every time I'm clicking uh, control, click contract ID. And I've added those three fields and maybe I want contract ID closer to the project ID and I want data area ID at the top. I can click that up, up, up. So that's done. That's what I want done. Refresh that. And that will bring all the project data into this, this table. Uh, and so that's, that's nice. But one of the nice things about, so as you start to build this from scratch, you can say, well, what if I want to report on two different tables. I can, in a new sheet, sort of do that same thing. Let's go back into the designer and I have, right, I'm, I'm reporting on the projects table over there and I have some references there. I'm selected in, in A1 here on my other sheet and let's bring in another table. Um, let's say customers. Well, so maybe you have a customers and a vendors report that you're you're trying to square some things away. Maybe you have, for our purposes in the, the projects module, maybe you care about project contract data in addition to the project data. And we want the project contract and the sales currency. And uh, what else do we have here? I don't know, maybe maybe just that. We'll bring that in. Click done. Click yes. So now we have we're connected to the projects data entity as well as the project contract data entity. 
refresh that. And so now when I hit refresh, it refreshes both tables. So, right, it's bringing in the live data on the projects in my sheet one. And we could do some, num some renaming to make this a bit clearer projects. On sheet two, we could call this the project contract. And so now I have a report that, that's showing me two different tables. If we go back in here, right, we have our, our all projects data. I'm going to hit Control Shift K to duplicate this tab. Yeah, I'll just hit right click and hit duplicate the tab. Okay, we'll go to project contract. Just so you can see, right, that we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, what is this? This is USSI, so this is showing us, we've got all, right, we can see that data, and we can see that data here. So that's just the, the lesson for today, is thinking about building up a, a connected Excel report using the Excel data connector, but building it from scratch instead of uh, just relying on, on the open and Excel functionality, which you can, you can always do and you can rely on it. And when you, when you download something with that open and Excel functionality, you can always add on to it and build and make a report across multiple tables like I did uh, in the example. But to me, until you start building it up from scratch, it, it, it's hard. I think building it up from scratch really drives those concepts home, uh, right? So here's to do something similar, right? We did open in Excel for that project contract entity. We could, in another tab, go to the designer. Add a table. bring in projects, right? It's plural, because of course it is, projects. And bring in the, the fields that we want, let's say. So this is another way to sort of accomplish the same thing, right? We, I have a report on the project data, I have a report on that, that project contract data. I've, I've used the project contract data as my starting point. But the, the key idea here is really that we are, um, the, the key idea here is that we can use the, the Excel template from scratch or, or use an Excel sheet from scratch to build up our Excel connector based report. So that's using the data connector to connect to Excel to Dynamics 365 for finance and operations, um, as opposed to going into finance and operations and just getting a pre-configured template. Okay, well, that's the, the lesson for today. And if you have any questions, please leave in the comments. Would, would love to talk to you about any of this. I'll see you, bye.